Well, it makes a lot of sense as far as I can tell. You know what I mean? Like, right. if you, if you, logic isn't different for different people. I, I hate it when people say that to me. You know what I mean? Like, people think differently. No, we use the same fucking rules. If you think differently, you're doing it wrong. The awesome. thing is that we have different sets of information, right? Like, two plus two always equals four, and that's because we all agree about the constituent information. It's when you and I look at a problem and see different things that we come to different answers. Right. If we saw the same thing, we would always get the same answer. Exactly. So is that to say then that the kind of pattern that our identity is affixed to in, in a present moment, that that almost determines our ability to perceive things as they, and, and I, as they really are is like too, too strongly put, I imagine. But um, yeah, but I'm just going to say it that way. My experience with that kind of thing is that once I can get people to agree to the basic premises of DM theory, I can get them to concede on like determinism versus free will, uh, you yeah. know, uh, the fall of religion, stuff like that, like stuff that you would you'd have been pretty hard pressed to get can you know assent out of other people about, right? And it's like it's just a natural conclusion, you know what I mean? If A, then B. There's right. no way, real way around it. Like if you can reduce things to mechanics, things reduce to mechanics. That's the end of it. Right. Because I mean, when you think about it, like if you if you start with nothing as like a nice kind of primer to clear the cache. Uh, it almost allows your frame of reference to clear and to reduce the noise that might be present. After you grok what nothingness is or is not, I think you're you're pretty ready to accept the fact that data is, regardless of you know whatever it is that we can say about it. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that like the it makes a lot of sense to be like skeptical of something that you haven't tested it until you've really really thought about what nothingness means right it's difficult for you to say whether or not it would exist so you kind of sit on the fence but at the same time it, like at the same time as i realized that that's a reasonable position and skepticism makes a lot of sense yep. i come Remember. up against like the really paradoxical idea that people genuinely argue that data doesn't exist. You know what I mean? Like how, yeah. like the opposite position is essentially that your experience doesn't exist. And it's yeah. like, how can you possibly use your experience to make a claim like that? Right. It's untenable in, in its formulation. Yeah. Well, that to me is, is why I like to think of the, once you really get what the, the neutral data point is, it, it's actually a neutral data logical point. And to me, that is the premise of proving the eternality of data and the relativistic quality of logic, how you, you can derive true and false from just the fact that data is. Um, and not just that, but like without the idea of things being relative to one another, true and false doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Right. You, you need right, to- like, Compared yeah, like with, without the idea of things that are relative to one another, true doesn't mean anything. Right. It, it's, it, it completely lacks context, like hot yeah. or cold or it, it's the same. Yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't actually make any sense. Right. It's a one-sided it's, proposition, essentially. Exactly, yeah, yeah. It doesn't really exist in, in reality or anywhere but, I guess, nonsense. Pretty much. Yeah, okay, so... People have been doing it for centuries. You can say something like God created the world or something like that. That's another one. That is one of the other options. Yeah. But if you put that next to data logic, it just falls. It does. So I don't really see that but there are really how any. It falls. In how about that? How it falls. Yeah. Because the, the yeah, okay. you don't need a God to start reality. The whole yeah. regress problem. Well, yeah. Okay. So essentially, um, you have to start with some sort of assumptions. You can't really get around that. So religious people, theologists, they go, well, you know, God, God exists. And then from that one assumption, you can say everything else because of the definition of God, even though the definition of God by most works of theology is actually paradoxical. For instance, the proposition that he's both omnipotent and uh, 
omniscient just mm-hmm. doesn't make any sense at all, right? Because if he knows what's going to happen, then he can't change it, mm-hmm. and vice versa. You can't have both, right? Um, but just just disregarding that, you you still have to start with the assumption that God exists, and you have no reason, logical or otherwise, to think that that is true. Right? Okay. Everything else, everything else is deductive. You say, well, look, there is an environment, therefore, you know, there must have been a creator. But you're always relying on evidence, which is itself relying on the proposition that you that you you have to start with, which is that there's a God, right? Otherwise, unless you assume there's a God, why? Do you think that this, whatever you're experiencing, why is that connected to what's true? Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how do you how do you use any evidence from this if you don't already assume that it exists? You can't get anywhere. So that's where they start. They say, start with God exists, right? And that isn't like by definition. There's no reason to suspect that that must be true. It seems just as as likely that God doesn't exist. There's nothing in God's definition that makes me think that him non-existing is impossible. Right? I think I follow. Um, yeah. I mean, I, the hard part is that, like, I, I already agree with you, and I'm trying to put myself in devil's advocate positions almost yeah. to ask questions. <laughs> and uh, So basically, the, the point of that was that God has a specific definition. You can say whatever you think it is, right? But we can, like, we can... Reduce it to characteristics. And ask and, what you mean by God, basically. Yeah, yeah. And when you when you do that, um, you, what, what you usually find out is that, you know, God is given status outside the causal loop Maybe. without without a logical reason. You don't have – there is no deduction from his definition that shows that he should necessarily be outside the causal loop. Right, it makes just as much sense to say now nah, God, God is in the causal loop. Right, and if if it right. would be in, then that would mean it would have some quality or attribute that would be measurable. And yeah, yeah. Um, so what really defeats the argument of God is the idea that whatever uh, resulted in the beginning of the universe, as we can observe it, as in the Big Bang, mm-hmm. um, was outside the causal loop. Because it had to be, because to say otherwise is illogical. Hmm. Okay. Right? The idea that things are the way they are because the other way actually couldn't be true. Right. Right? Like, it, you don't need uh, someone to start things off if the light can only be on and off, and off isn't there. <laughs> nice. That's a good one, man. Uh, that then okay let's let's carry that out into like what could be a metaphor then Mm because the light switch metaphor if if the omniverse is in a state of perpetual on and our observable universe is what then in context to that uh well our observable universe is something that also is perpetually on but the way that we experience it is not in its totality is in the whole timeline of our universe Mm -hmm. which is pretty long Instead, we experience it as if it was happening right. because that's how it seems to us being bound by the spatiotemporal environment. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, this is the experience of subjects if this were the one that was just real, simply real. And, and that's why it seems like things are happening in the order that they are and that time exists in the way that it does. Right? But if you think about it as a facet of the thing that exists independently of us Mm -hmm. then the whole timeline is static start to finish and it's just like playing a movie right like your experience right now is just like someone looking through a small piece of the thing right it's it collapses to a disc of uh of perceivability you want to know a quote from my son today Mm -hmm. the one that you were talking to just a little bit he said sometimes i feel like i'm watching a movie Dante about life. <laughs> That's an interesting one. It's, it reminds me of that meme that you sent me that one time. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was a quality meme. I wish we yeah. could. We, oh, we should like fucking I can cut probably, that into this video. Let me screen share it. I can probably do that. 